the CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... poet wrote that there is nothing in words. Believe what is before your eyes. But what about the mind's eye? In it, dreams and nightmares are real enough. And wide awake, any number of persons have seen apparitions or have had premonitions through extrasensory perception. The world of the macabre, then, is not unreal at all. Sometimes, quite often, in fact, Real life is macabre. It has become so for a young Hollywood actress named Mady Rambeau. What does this note mean? Just what I wrote. You've seen the snapshot? You'll pay, Miss Rambeau. My boss thinks it's worth a hundred grand. Blackmail? Who took the picture? Now, I wonder about that, too. But there it is. You at a private gambling party with your arms around the neck of a known mobster. You, Miss Clean. You'll pay, Miss Rambo. Our mystery drama, Blackmail, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Roy Windsor and stars Larry Haynes and Terry Keene. It is sponsored in part by A.R.M., Allergy Relief Medicine, and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. There are many ways to earn a living, and every one of them is honorable if it is earned honestly. Aristotle, for one, maintained that real happiness can be achieved only if you work up to your standard of excellence. That is a viewpoint that means nothing to those who cheat. The kind of person who cuts corners sometimes goes too far. He becomes a thief. Thieves come in many grades, and the lowest is a blackmailer. One of them, the man we're about to meet, is a blackmailer. Eddie Small, who owns Small's Chop House, in West Hollywood. Maxie. Maxie. Huh? What are you staring at? Something wrong? Uh, I don't know. Look at that guy in the booth. The one by himself. Okay, what about him? He looks familiar. Why not? He's been in two or three times. Nice looking. Skip that. <laughs> don't be stupid, Eddie. But thanks all the same. For what? Hmm. Being jealous after all these years. <laughs> You're still great looking, Maxie. Yeah, and I still ought to be in pictures. Who is he? Who is who? I just keep looking at that guy. I've seen him somewhere before. Not here. It'll come to me. You go ask him. You don't look like some of the pugs and hustlers who come in and nurse a slow beer. I'll walk over. Go ahead. I'll be in the back room. Eddie. I got it. You know who that is? Tony Carbo. Hey. The tough boy from New York. Yeah, he shaved his mustache and cut his hair normal, but that's the face. That's what we saw in the newspapers. I think you're right. He's wanted by the New York police for hijacking a booze truck and killing the driver. What do we do? We don't call the cops. But I don't want him around the joint. We've got a lot of customers who don't want cops snooping around. Including us. Yeah, right. Ask for his bill and tell him this place is off limits. If he needs a hand, out, I'll stake him. Eddie, listen, I'm thinking of something. Maybe you could, uh, help us. No, thank you. He's wanted for murder. I want him out of here. What about Mady Rambo? Huh? You see what I mean? Clean the guy up, buy him some good clothes, let him be our collector. What's he got to lose? Isn't that really beautiful, Maxie? You're smart. It's an idea. Go have a talk with him and play it close. He's a killer. Hi. How you 
you're doing. Okay. It's good food. Eddie serves the best. You've been in before? Twice. No rule against it, is there? Oh, of course not. Come often and stay late. Thank you. Well, I'm finished. Now you can pay me. You're the boss? Eddie Small owns the place, but I kind of oversee it. Oh, the innkeeper's wife? Yeah, you might say that. I'm Maxine. Glad to meet you. And you? Tony. Corbett. Corbett? That's right. Okay, if you say so. Why? You stick to them? You question all the customers? I like to get to know them. I mean, we draw a strange crowd, racetrack touts, ex-fighters, guys in the numbers, rackets, all kinds. So far, none like you, Mr. Corbett. Meaning what, Maxine? I've seen you before. Oh, I see. In the newspapers, without the long hair and mustache. Yeah, thanks for the tip. Yeah, I like your joint. Sorry, this has to be my last visit. I'll clear up. Oh, that was Eddie's idea. I got a different one. Eddie said if you need a handout, you're welcome. Well, that's very nice of him. Why? Is he afraid I'll shoot up the place? Well, you've used a gun before. We don't want any of that around here. It would attract the cops. We don't care for them very much. Mr. Carpo. You said Eddie wants me to clear up. You had a different idea. What is it? You know who Mady Rambo is? The young movie actress? That's the one. Miss Queen. She's going to be big if her image doesn't get spoiled. Public image, I mean. Why should it be? Well, everybody thinks she's a straight arrow. No booze. Everybody's young sweetheart, you know. Mm-hmm. So perfect she don't have to be born again. Okay. What about her? She could mean uh, money to you. I don't get it. Interesting. Well... Sure, sure. I could use some real money, but uh, what do I have to do for it? Oh, I leave that to Eddie. He'll explain. Uh, not here. Why not? Someone else might recognize you as Tony Carbo and blow the whistle. You free at five? Sure. I'll give you an address on Mechanic Street. You be there, and Eddie will talk to you. Yeah. What's it all about? You'll find out at five, Tony. <laughs> Right on there, Maxie. Yeah, right on time. Hi. Come in, Tony. Nice place. Eddie, this is Tony Carbo. How are you, Tony? Okay, so far. You know, I like your restaurant. You must do well to live like this. Mm, the restaurant does okay, but it's no gold mine. We uh, do other things. Oh, I see. Is that where I come in? Maxine said something about Mady Rambo. Are you into movies? Mm, in a small way. And you got a proposition for me? Yeah, a pretty good one, I think you'll agree. Tony Carbo is wanted by the police. You're safe with me. You ain't safe if you show yourself around Hollywood. Why'd you come here from New York? I'm shipping out. Oh, yeah? How do you manage that? Well, this uh, small freighter will take me on. Bound for where? South America. Freighter's got a sideline too, right? Yeah, so they tell me. Who tells you that? Oh, a Jersey pal I've done a few favors for, Joe Hernandez. Runs dope. That's the guy? That's the guy. I don't know what he does except what I read in the paper. So you ship out and then what? I do a fade out. Hmm. Guy without a country? Yeah, something like that. Well, it's better than facing a murder charge, right? Yeah, I'd say so. And you ship out when? Well, the boat docks in three days. I'll be gone in five. What's the name of the freighter? I'll keep that to myself. Five days should do it, Eddie. It's been three weeks, babe, and we got nowhere. I don't know. We got nothing to lose. Could you use ten grand? Not if I have to earn it with a gun. No gun. Nothing like that. Show me the picture, Maxine. What do you think of that, Tony? Yeah. I get it. Blackmail. That picture's worth a hundred grand. You collect, you get ten percent. You know who the man in the picture is? Big Frank Fatello. 
Run as a town. Yeah, I know, I know. I've heard of him, the mobster. Yeah, they call him that, but he's a smooth businessman. And everything that turns a buck. Restaurants, tracks, betting, you name it. And there's Lady Rambo with her arms around his neck. Hollywood's Miss Clean hugging Big Frank. I guess you know what would happen if the picture went public. Um, uh, who's gambling joint? Well, it's private. It's not important. The picture says gambling joint, and that's the last place the public expects to see Mady Rambo. So? So she pays, and she stays Miss Clean. She doesn't. Her career is finished. You got it. I collect the money, and I get ten grand. Is that right? Uh, that's right. And, uh... You've been trying to collect for, uh, how long did you say? Three weeks? Yeah. We sent her a copy of the picture and made our demand. I gave her a month to come up with a dough. Time's just about run out. Uh, how'd you get the picture? <laughs> She'd like to know, too. Professional secret, Tony. You have the negative? I know where it is. Well, she won't pay off without getting that. Nobody is that stupid. Well, then give it to her. We'll make a copy. Ah, look, you can't squeeze her forever. What if they track down whoever took the picture? They can't. Take my word for it. Hmm. How do you arrange for the money to be delivered? Uh, we got a drop arranged, a real clever one. Now, the cops know all the tricks. Probably Big Frank does, too. I think you're lucky Mady hasn't come through with the money. Once she does, it'll lead to you. Now you know why you're here, Tony. Mm-hmm. The collector. A ten grand sitting duck. Well, what do you say, Tony? I can try. What? Well, what's wrong with tonight? Where does she hang out? You're not going to her house. No, no, no. She goes out. What restaurant? Mason. She got a boyfriend or an escort? She was more of an escort, a hairdresser from the studio. Uh -huh. I'll need some money. Say, a uh, hundred. You got it. Uh, you're you're going to speak to her in the restaurant? Why not? Well, if you're spotted, you're going to be picked up. If you're not, what if she raises a fuss? Before she gets the chance, I say I'm there to help her. How? You're holding a picture over her head. What if I say I know who the blackmailers are? <laughs> you wouldn't do that, would you, Pally? Now, you know better than that, Eddie. I tell her if she loses her nerve and wants to yell police, I don't carry the picture, but I describe it. She'll listen to me. Now, what about the escort, that hairdresser? Don't worry about him. What's his name? Jody Pearl. Okay, Maxine, will you telephone Masons and ask if Lady Rambo's having dinner there tonight? You know what worries me, Tony? What's that? How you get into Masons without a cop spotting you? You're wanted for murder. They won't spot me. I can make sure they don't. <laughs> supernatural about what's happened so far. But macabre? I'd say yes. One synonym for that word is grotesque. And that, for me, describes blackmail and those who practice it. In Eddie Small, Maxine, and Tony Carbo, we have a charming trio trying to extract a fortune from a young movie star. How they fare will be unfolded when I return with Act Two. have been destroyed when the public is turned against one of its heroes by learning that he is a human being. Everyone commits indiscretions. They're usually shrugged off. But when a statesman, a famous athlete, or a movie star makes a careless statement or is photographed out of context with his public image, the public turns on him. We are hero worshippers. Knowing this, the blackmailer makes heroes pay for their mistakes as young Lady Rambo has found out. Don't you dare tell me what to do. Well, I only said... I won't. I won't. But maybe... No. But I'll tell you what I will do. I am going to get whoever did this to me. Swell. Good luck. Don't be sarcastic, Jody. I mean it. Okay, you mean it. How? Have the police got to leave? Frank the teller will find him. Or them. Whoever. You spoke to the teller? The head of the studio did. Mr. the teller did a slow burn... His boys are at work? He phoned and said he was sorry. When he finds the pig... That... Yeah, sure, sure, but then it'll be too late. You stalled for three weeks. You've got a week left. 
Pay the money now and save your career. No, I didn't do anything wrong and I'm not going to pay. Well, it's your career, it's not mine. What did I do that was wrong? You got your picture to take in embracing a notorious mobster. You, every parent's darling, the girl they'd like their daughters to be. I did not embrace him. Take a look at the snapshot. I won a big pot at roulette and I was jumping with excitement. So was Mr. Vitello. I didn't even know who he was. He grinned at me, opened his arms, and I jumped. Right out of the movies. <sighs> if that picture gets printed, you're finished. You've busted your public image. That is not true. I know that, but protect yourself. The police will go on looking for the blackmailer. So will Mr. Vitello. Oh, you've got some funny loyalties. How do you know Vitello didn't set you up for that snapshot? What? Well, think it over. Now get your coat, and we'll head for Mason. You think Mr. Vitello... He's Big Frank, remember? He might... He might have set me up for blackmail. It's one of his rackets, baby. What's this? A note from some admirer. What else? Jody, he's here. Who? The blackmailer. Let me see that note. Uh, may I speak with you alone? I overheard that you are being victimized. I may be able to help you. I'm in the dark, too. Will you come over to my table? I'm alone, wearing tinted glasses. Look around, and I'll bow my head. Ah, there he is. I'll ask the captain to notify the security guard. No. Yes. You know who that man is? The collector. Not the blackmailer? No, he's from the blackmailer. Just some guy to collect the money. How do you know that? Well, it's the way it works. Let me speak to the guy... Then get the police. No. No, no, it's my career. Maybe the man does want to help me. You just stay here. I'll go over to his table. Good evening, Miss Rambo. Who are you? Tony Corbett. What is the meaning of this note you sent to my table? Someone is trying to extort a fortune from you because of a snapshot of you and Frank Vitello. You said you might be able to help me. How? Can you raise the money? Say I could and say I won't. You won't pay? I did nothing wrong. Now, my friend's all for calling the police because he thinks you're the collector. Who's the friend? Jody Pearl, a hairdresser at the studio. He's well informed. Now, if I give him a signal... You will be escorted to the police, Mr. Corbett. That's a waste of time. I don't know much. You overheard I was being blackmailed. Where? That's a lead. A dead end. What I don't know and what seems to have been overlooked is how this racket works. Now, it's been worked in other studios, but no one's found out how. Now, that's how I might be able to be of help, Miss Rambo. Who took the picture? I have no idea. The snapshot, even a negative, and all the copies, they're not as important as discovering the person who had a camera and clicked it. You know, first you sound like a collector, and now you sound like a cop. Why do you care how the racket is working? There's no protection for you, Miss Rambo, unless the person who snapped the picture is caught. Even if you paid the 100000 even if you got a negative in exchange, you'd still be unprotected. Say I paid the money. You'd give it to the blackmailer. I'd find him or he'd find me. How? Through Frank Fratello. He's looking for the blackmailer, isn't he? How do you know that? That's just a guess. He doesn't hurt innocent persons. Uh, an honorable monster. I think so. You, uh... You'd see your meet, Mr. Fratello? Yeah. Jody said I was crazy. You're even crazier. Mr. Vitello might break every bone in your body. And learn nothing. Because I don't know anything. If he doesn't believe me, I'm dead. If he does, and that's my gamble, I can lead him to the blackmailer. Because you can be sure he'll find out I've got the money and he'll come after me. How will the blackmailer know that? Vitello's men let it be known. So the blackmailer goes after you? That's right. I'd rely on Vitello to protect me. And what's in this for you? Ten percent. Ten thousand. Mm. What about the other night? You'd get it back. 
How can you guarantee that? By catching the man who snapped the picture. What is it that you're saying that I give you the hundred thousand? You break the racket by finding out how it's worked. You keep ten and return the rest. Why? Blackmail's a dirty crime. It was once worked on me. What's to prevent you from taking the hundred thousand and running out? I won't. That's all I can say. Either you believe me or you don't. I'll take the chance. Tell me what to do. Well? Nothing. Who is the guy? Just a nut. Did he know anything? What's his name? Tony Corbett. He overheard my name mentioned. And what's he want? He knows I'm being blackmailed. I'm to give him the money and have Mr. Vitello's boys follow him until the blackmailer goes after him. End of blackmailer. Oh, matey. I pay him 10000 and he returns the other night. you You've lost your little mind. Can't you see through the scheme? He's the collector. I said that before. Pretty clever one, too. He can't walk in and say, give me the money, because the cops would grab him when he walked out. So he comes up with this harebrained scheme. He doesn't know the blackmailer. Maybe not. But he knows who gave him the assignment to collect the money and even where to leave it or send it. The blackmailer stays undercover, and the guy who gives instructions to the collector leaves town. I see. So this guy cleverly gets you to believe he wants to help you. He'll get away with the money or be caught. And if he's caught, you'll get back your money, but you won't find the blackmailer. So what should I do? Wait until you hear from the blackmailer again. He'll describe his collector. Pay only him. There's only a few days left, Jody. You'll get the word. Then pay up. I see you still want one piece, Tony. Jamita. It's all set. Should pay up? Yep. Hey, I got to hand it to you, Tony. My congratulations. Yeah, maybe the hundred had gone down the drain. How'd you work it, Tony? Well, there wasn't much to it after the first few moments. I sent her a note. She came over. I told her I'd overheard she was in trouble, and I wanted to help her. How? By convincing her I didn't know the blackmailer, but if she gave me the money, he'd come after me. Ah. Uh-huh. So instead... I get the money. The fellow's boys and the cops follow me, but they don't stop me. You give me an envelope, a heavy brown one. Address it where you want it to go. Put enough postage on it, and I'll see to it that it gets mailed. Uh, I don't like it, Tony. I want to see the money, all of it. You don't trust me? I wouldn't trust myself with a hundred grand. You deliver the money to me. All right. What's your suggestion? When are you seeing her again? Two nights from now. Have the hairdresser bring her here. Then what? You join him in a booth. She gives you the money. What about the guy? She's told him what you're up to. She goes along with your scheme. He does, too. All right. Now I got the money. What next? She has an envelope with the money in it. You say to me, Eddie, can I leave this in your safe until I ask for it? And I say, sure, Tony. That way I got the money and no one can hold you up for it. You go home and hang out waiting for that blackmailer to come after you. I can't hang long. That freighter... You come in the next night and I give you a ten. After that... Vamos. Simple as that. Clear? You're the boss. Don't forget it. You said the cops are tailing a girl. Would you believe I got a couple of boys tailing you? I never doubted that for a minute, Eddie. Yes? Dinner tonight? All right, uh, but Jody? Yeah? Not Mason's. Um, there's a place called Eddie Small's Chop House in West Hollywood. Oh, that's no place for you, matey. It sounds like a saloon. Oh, I hear it's good. Who said so? That man. He wants me to meet him there, and I don't want to go alone. The con man you talked to a couple of nights ago? That's right. Maybe don't be crazy. I'm going to be. Oh, boy. He'll meet us there. Now, come over around 7, all right? Do I have a choice? Nope. And I'm excited. This could be the end of the trouble, Jody. More like the end of you. Two lousy days. You worried? Where's he been? 
Don't the boys know? Yeah, some. But he's given her the slip a couple of times. Then he walks into his rooming house, bold as brass. Don't figure. He's crazy. He's pushing his luck or the cops are asleep. They're not asleep, Eddie. They're waiting. They can arrest him any time. They're waiting to see what he does with Mady Rambo, and that's why I don't like your plan. You got a better one, babe? I just don't like having the cops stake out the chop house. There's the cops and Vitello's thugs. I like that. Tony turns the envelope with the money over to you. You come to the bar and ask me to put it in the safe. I say, okay. Then Tony leaves. And the cops walk in and tell you to open the safe. Okay. Okay? They get the money. Why? Are you dumb or something, Eddie? They get the envelope and the money. We're frozen out and they arrest Tony. What's this, babe? A manila envelope. That's what the cops will find in the safe. It's fat. You're sure? It's stuffed with junk from Tony's room. Clippings, little money, insurance policy, junk. When you hand me the envelope with the money in it, I do a sleight of hand behind the bar. A minute later, you come behind the bar and drop the money in your apron. Then, vamos. Go home. Yeah. That could work. But when Tony comes back tomorrow for his ten grand... He won't come back, babe. What remains to be revealed about our trio is how it falls out. Hopefully to the benefit of the young actress. Criminals have no conscience until they are caught. And then it is not a matter of remorse, but one of regret. They are not to be pitied. Their victims are... I will return shortly with Act Three. This is a time of the anti-hero. Very few persons in public life, the professions, and business command our respect. Everyone is suspect. That makes us cynical. Such a philosophy encourages a certain kind of mentality to exploit human weakness. Lady Rambo committed an indiscretion, and for it, a blackmailer has leached onto her. It is early evening, and she has just received Jody Pearl. What's this about a chop house in West Hollywood? That's where the man wants me to bring the money. Eddie Small's chop house is a dive. That's where he heard the rumor about me. I'm seen there and word gets back about him and me. Uh-huh. And the blackmailer finds out and goes after him and the police or Vitello's boys go after the blackmailer. He's caught. You've given the man ten grand and get back ninety. You'll also get back the ten, maybe. Why? Uh, I've got a surprise for you, sweetheart. The man... You don't know his name. The man isn't that knight in armor of yours. He's Tony Carbo. I've seen that name somewhere. What? You have if you read the papers. Tony Carbo? He's a killer. And the police want him bad. How do you know he's Tony Carbo? By looking at him. Well, then why haven't the police picked him up? Well, that's been bothering me, too. I don't know. Just luck. Listen, that scared me, Jody. It should. Maybe I better call it off. No. No, go through with it. I think we'll be safe. You hand over the money. Yeah, I have it here in a manila envelope. Okay. We made him have a drink. You hand over the money. He'll leave and the police will pick him up. So I get back the money and the blackmailer still sells the snapshot and goodbye Hollywood. Maybe not. Tony Carbo is horned in on the blackmailer. The blackmailer wants the money. You'll hear from him again, and he'll identify his collector and send him to you. Pay up and forget it. I won't pay up. Well, it's your funeral, baby. You're over a barrel. I would pay the money only if the whole rotten racket is exposed. That means the blackmailer and especially the pig who sneaked the picture. Maybe they're one and the same. I don't think so. Whoever took the picture was at that party. Now, everybody was respectable, and most of them were wealthy. Who could it be? 
How is it done? Did you see a camera, Jody? No. It's a mystery to me. What's the point of meeting the man now? This could be bad publicity. Or it could be good. Tony Carbo tries to extort money from Screen Star. She alerts police, places herself in danger. The police capture him. That's a big story. Maybe. Ready? I guess so. Ah, cheer up. We'll trap this guy and then leave. He said his name was Tony Corbett. Sure. And I'm the king of Siam. Well, then we got to think you shipped out, pal. Hi, Eddie. That's me. You haven't been in for two days. What you been up to, Tony? Didn't your boys tell you? Oh, some. You get around. Why not? I even went out to the studio. Why? Mm. Just snooping around. I don't like that. Will you relax? Your troubles will be over in an hour. She's coming here? With Jody Pearl. Now, how do we handle it? Like I said, you hand me the envelope. No, Eddie. He hands it to me. Yeah, that's right. Maxie gives it to me and says, keep it for you in a safe. Then enjoy your dinner. Yeah. Miss Rambo won't have much appetite for food. Then let him leave. You with him. Yeah. Uh, what about my money? Tomorrow. Now, there'll be cops watching me. I can't come back. Ain't you the decoy for the blackmailer? Everyone follows you. The cops tail you and wait for the blackmailer to turn up. That's what you set up, right? Uh-huh. But I want to walk out with my money. No can do, baby. Why not? The dough won't be here. I see. You see a lot. For instance... What do you see out of the studio? I looked around. What were you looking for? How your racket works, Eddie. It's simple, but clever. Tell me about it. You work it through someone in the movie company, a bit player, a grip, anyone who wants to pick up a tax-free bundle. Someone who can get close to a star and catch him or her in an off moment. Uh-huh. Maybe even train the person on how to use a miniature camera. We never had a camera in our lives. You've got those spies everywhere. You wait, check pictures. A juicy one means money. For instance, Miss Mady Rambo in Frank Fratello's arms. Must be a pretty good business, Eddie. Too bad you're shipping out, Tony. Yeah, but not before I get my ten grand. Take it out of the hundred she gives you. Then get out. Then get lost. Um, what happens to the negatives of those juicy pictures, Eddie? They're kept in a very safe place. Mm -hmm. And what happens if one of your spies tries to work the blackmail con on his own? I have him taken care of. Well, it's nice. Look at that old wooden bar. I bet the place is 50 years old. Good evening, Miss Randall. Good evening. Uh, this is Mr. Pearl. He works with me at the studio. Yeah, glad to meet you. Please, sit down. Is Carbo... I mean, are you really Tony Carbo? Corbett. Miss Rambo, Corbett. Did you bring the money? Look, mister, before Miss Rambo answers that question, answer one for me. You think that because you've been seen with her twice, the blackmailer is going to surface? He wants the money. I'll have it. He'll show. If you leave here with the money... But I don't leave here with the money. I don't understand. Eddie is a friend of mine. He owns this place. Now, you give me the money. I remove my ten, seal the envelope, and have Eddie place it in his safe. Now, Eddie knows that you, Miss Rambo, will return and claim it. And he'll give it to you. But you said... I mean, Mr. Carbo, I agreed to your scheme because you said... You'd find the person who took that picture and he'd expose the blackmailer. Isn't that what you said? Exactly. And you've done that? Yes, Miss Rambo. I don't believe that. How would a thug like you move into Hollywood a week ago? How do you know that, Mr. Pearl? Well, by by what I read in the newspaper. I, I don't know how long you've been here. Make it a month. There's no way you could break this racket. Why not? Because it's been going on for years in all the studios. Yeah, I know. Tell me, who took the picture? Was it the blackmailer? No. I'll tell you when I take you home. You take her home? 
Why won't you tell me now? Because I don't want to disturb the peace. All right, let's get out of here, matey. This guy's a phony. Now, the money, Miss Rambo. Trust me. You'll excuse me, matey. Sitting across from the killer turns my stomach. I hope you get home safely. I've had enough of this charade. Jody! I'll let him go, Miss Rambo. You're not making a fool of me, are you, Mr. Carpo? No, I swear I'm not. Now, here's what happens. Take out the envelope, give me $10,000. Seal the rest of the money in the envelope, and I'll wave to Maxine. All right. This is just crazy. Yeah, it is, but do it. Don't shake. All right, there's your money. I seal the envelope. And here comes Eddie. Yeah, Tony. Eddie, uh, will you do me a favor? Yeah, sure. Need some cash? No, no, no. I wonder if you'd keep uh, this envelope in your safe for me. Sure. I'm shipping out. Uh, yeah. And when I return from South America, I'll call for it. Sure. It'll be safe with me. You know that. Miss Rambo, just watch. Watch carefully. And don't be frightened by the fire. Police. Hey, look, they grabbed Jody. Out the back way, Maxine. Why, Jody? Tony found out. He's got his ten grand. How could he find it? Get out. Hurry. Well, they got nothing on us, Eddie. Let them have the money. They got Jody. Don't you know what that means? I'm the double cross. The police will make Jody talk. Tony must have found out Jody took the picture. How? Get out, Maxine. Take the envelope and get out. Here, let me. Goodness, I'm shaking like a leaf. I don't blame you. Uh, let me have your coat. Oh, thank you, thank you. I really have to sit down. That's the wildest experience I've ever had. Hmm. Oh, come on in, Mr. Corbett. Uh, make it Tony. We've uh, been through quite a lot. Uh, yes. You'd better tell me all about it. You can't be Tony Carbo. No. There is no Tony Carbo. But the picture's in the newspaper. And the hijacking and the murder charge, all faked. We had good cooperation from the papers. Why? Well, what was it about? Blackmail in the movie studios. You know, you weren't the only victim. I still don't know what happened. Didn't... Didn't the man yell, they got Jody? That's right. The police? Mm. Why? I mean, why old Jody? He's my pal. Maybe you're in for a shock. I told you that night at Mason's that the most important aspect of this case wasn't the snapshot, but the person who took the picture. Well, I found the negative. That gave me the person. And here's that uh, deadly little piece of film. That's the original? Yeah, I think so. I don't think there are any copies, but we'll make sure. Where'd you find this? We searched the houses of everyone who was at that gambling party. Now, most of the persons owned cameras, but none owned a half-frame camera, one that is about half the size of a bar of soap. It's inconspicuous and sharp. Even the blow-up's quite sharp. I found quite a few enlarged backstage shots in one person's house. Judy. That's right. Well, that proved nothing. We had to find that negative I just gave you, and we did. Oh, how could he? He was my friend. Yeah, you thought... Why would he do such a rotten thing? Money. He didn't care about you, matey. He cared about himself. He lived in reflected fame. He was a hypocrite. No, I don't think you're the first star he's caught off guard with his camera. And that man at the chop house? Eddie. He was the blackmailer. By now, he's under arrest. And your money. And this. No, that's... That's yours, Tony. You earned it. No, 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 no. I'm not allowed to take money, matey. That's my job to track down criminals. You're a cop. Well, sort of. Here. Here's my identification. Tony Corbett. FBI. For a change, no ghosts, apparitions, but all the same, a tale of the macabre. In our so-called real world, we have the underworld with its large assortment of criminals and their many strange practices. Most of us will never be victims of a blackmailer, but...
public figures live with the danger of making an indiscreet slip and paying for it. I'll return shortly. At one time or another, every person is a hero to someone. Father to son, a classmate who excels, the teacher who inspires, anyone who impresses us with exceptional ability. That's because we're daydreamers. Instinctively, we like to attain excellence. It's popular today to sneer at such an idea. We've become cynical. Let's return to hero worship. Heroes like Tony Corbett inspire ideals. Our cast included Larry Haynes, Robert Dryden, Terry Keene, and Jada Rowland. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and ARM, Allergy Relief Medicine. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.